Bible down at Timothyville. Did I bet you'd have forgot that? And I went down there one night. I forgot that. Yeah. Bitch, you were with me while you were there. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm glad to know you were converted then. <laughs> he was very dignified. I reckon he thought he was really in a large city down at Tiffany. <laughs> he was dressed up. And I noticed him every now and then when he, during the sermon he had opened his coat and, and he would pick up with his sermon and continuing right on. And he was preaching about he shot the bed to go in those three. You know. And so he started again and he opened up his coat and I, I just happened to notice that the notes. Um, so he stumbled and he stumbled. So he started to repeat the names again, he pulled out his coat and Hart, Shatner, and Mark. <laughs> Before he got his PhD, <laughs> his doctor degree, you know. And I don't, I don't know whether it was down at, at that church that he was preaching a revival. I believe he'd been out to another, probably a more sophisticated church. They invited him out to, to suck, you know. Country church still. I don't know where I don't know where y'all still do that in town or not. But during the revival meeting, we have we have the visiting preacher and the pastor to eat eat the lunches with us during that week. But undoubtedly, J.W. had been eating too much, and, and so at this particular night, he he, he said, "Not listen, so I don't want y'all to take any offense, but but I just I just can't eat too much and preach a good sermon." He had a very light meal that night, and so the, the lady of the house said, told her husband, said, you go ahead, you go ahead and preach it, and I'll clean up the dishes and get up and straighten up. So he did. She come back, she asked him, says, John says, how was the, how was the preaching tonight? He said, come on, tell truth, but she said, just well, we'll be a bit. <laughs>
because uh, Jasmine is a pity with it because I've been watching y'all. And so she looked around them hands and didn't know nothing about them. She got way back out of one of these kind of stores and says uh, she might better have somebody look at all on the oil check. So she pulled up this little store front there and it had that pump out there and a can of two old cheap oil out there on the porch like it used to be back in those days. And she, this young school teacher drove up there and she didn't see nobody but she saw this old fellow that run the store probably he was there with his hat down. And she said, is anybody here can look and see if I need any oil? He looked up and said, lady, I just can't look at you and what you need but says a good Dose of oil ain't never hurt me. Miss me, I'm going to buy the road. Rock doesn't live on the sea My mother was told one time when I was like two years old she was having problems with me. And so back then, you know, you didn't go see the doctor. You just went up the hill and talked to Matt Phillips. And so my mother went up the hill to talk to Matt Phillips about Fleeta. And she said, just give her a tablespoon of castor oil every morning before breakfast and she'll be all right. <laughs> so I don't know how Robert did such a good job of this. Now, tonight is the beginning of when Mr. Allen came up here. He kept talking about that this room has such, well, such a beautiful sight, but he never did identify anybody that made it beautiful. One time I had a group of ladies that gave a little play, it was a one-act play, it was very funny. And all of these ladies belonged to a club, and the purpose of the club was to come together to think beautiful thoughts, because they were beautiful women. Now, in this room tonight, the reason that it's like it is, is because it's filled with beautiful women. say that. He just had to just say, well, you know, he never did identify us. And ladies, we like to be number one. <laughs> well, we enjoy it. Now then, I can't quite understand why I have been asked to do this, because I'm not a comedian. I have been a school teacher, and I've had a lot of fun and done a lot of things. But I've never had to roast anybody before in my life. Now, I'm sure I roasted many a girl. And I used to tell I've them. I've been seeing lots of times. <laughs> Yeah. 
decided to get married, and I was the only person that was not with one in the Penn family that didn't come to Carol Kennedy. And my husband had to travel over five, seven hundred miles to get me. And his father was a little bit disturbed. And so when I gave him to go back to his home, said, and I was being introduced, I can remember how everybody came around and looked at me and walked away. Yeah. 